Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror fantasy film, Wishmaster Part 2. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a group of thieves ransacking a museum at night. One of them breaks the glass case holding an artifact and triggers the alarm. It starts blaring loudly. The thieves make a run for it, but a museum security guard opens fire on them. The thief who is left behind accidentally knocks down a small statue to the floor. She notices that there is a brilliant fire opal nestled among the statue's broken pieces, so she puts the opal inside her cloak. The thief, named Morgana, is shot by a security guard, but the opal inside her cloak repelled the bullet. She catches up to her boyfriend, who asks if she's alright. Morgana pulls out the opal, which is separated into two halves. The opal pieces burn her palm, and she tosses them to the floor. This time, it's her boyfriend, who gets shot at by the security guard, and he urges her to leave him behind. Morgana fatally shoots the security guard and hesitantly leaves her boyfriend behind, so she can escape. Suddenly, strings of flesh spurt out of the gemstone pieces. They stick to the wall in front of the boyfriend and start forming to the monster named Jin, an otherworldly being who can grant people's desires in twisted ways. The monster crawls toward him and offers him everlasting life. The boyfriend replies that he wishes he had never been born, and the Jin grants his wish by reversing him from an adult man to a teenager, to a fat baby, to a smelly sperm, and eventually into nothing. Soon after, more policemen arrive at the scene, and one cop is the first to see the Jin. With shaking hands, he orders the Jin to freeze, so he grants the cop's wish by freezing him to death. Two more cops follow, and they see the Jin in his human persona. He sardonically admits to killing the first cop, and the other cops arrest him. The Jin spends the whole night being interrogated by the detective regarding his involvement in the museum heist and the two dead men. The detective believes that the Jin is covering for the people who did the heist, but he becomes frustrated with the Jin's lackadaisical attitude. The Jin tells the detective that he would be quite happy to fulfill his wish if he would just say it. The detective orders another policeman to take the Jin away. One morning, Morgana watches the TV and sees a reporter discussing the museum heist. The Jin introduced his human self to the authorities, pleaded guilty to the heist, and was sentenced to imprisonment. However, the police are still puzzled about the whereabouts of the paintings stolen during the heist. Morgan also learns from the reporter that the statue damaged during the robbery is of a Persian god called Ahira Mazda. Finally, she sees the wife and children of the dead security guard she shot, mourning on TV. She feels guilty about causing the man's death, as well as confusion as to why another man was arrested for her group's crime. That night, one of the Jin's cellmates picks a fight with him. Unperturbed by the other man's threats, the Jin asks him to state what he wants most. He jokingly answers that he wishes to walk through the cell's bars and escape. Of course, the Jin obliges his request, and his cellmate's body is forced through the bars, killing him brutally. As the Jin kills the cellmate, Morgana tosses and turns in her sleep and dreams of the Jin's voice, telling her that she had awakened him and will fulfill a prophecy. Bothered by her dreams and the consequences of the botch heist, Morgana visits a church the next day. The priest there is one of her former lovers. At first, he is not happy to see her. Their relationship did not end well, and the priest had devoted himself to priesthood and tried to move on from her. But he sees that something is disturbing her, and the two sit down in one of the church pews. She tells him that her boyfriend is dead, and the priest replies that he was a bad influence on her. She then vaguely asks him if he believes in the devil, since she has been experiencing weird visions lately. Meanwhile, the Jin is making new friends in prison. He approaches one of the scariest inmates and asks him what he wants most in the world. The inmate answers that he'd like to see his lawyer screw himself, and the Jin evilly smiles and says that he can make that happen, but in exchange for his soul. Of course, the inmate does not really take the Jin's offer seriously. The Jin also adds that after his wish comes true, the inmate should go and spread the word to his friends. Soon after that, the inmate is escorted to his regular appointment with his lawyer, who informs him that he found a loophole in the charges that can potentially exonerate him. Suddenly, he doubles over in pain, and the inmate's very dirty wish comes true. Morgana gets a vision while this is happening, and as she sleeps that night, she hears the Jin's voice once again and even feels a hand touching her. She is confused by what is happening to her and decides to look up the mythology behind Ahira Mazda. Her research reveals that the deity is the god of light in ancient Persia, as well as the keeper of the fire. The priest visits her apartment and asks Morgana how she's doing. She shares with him the bizarre visions and voices she had been experiencing lately, as well as what happened in the museum that night. The priest urges her to go to the police and confess, since an innocent man was framed for her crimes. Following the priest's advice, Morgana goes to the prison where the jinn is kept. 
After what happened with the inmate's lawyer, the other inmates have grown afraid of the jinn. However, a Russian inmate, nicknamed Vodka, approaches him and asks him to get him out of prison, never mind the cost of his soul. Unfortunately, they are interrupted by prison guards, who escort the jinn to the visitor's area where Morgana is waiting. She first asks him about her boyfriend's fate, which the jinn answers cryptically, saying that he is no longer on this earth. Morgana then asks him why he chose to confess to the crimes, and he explains that he wanted to access the despair-filled and needy inmates, who are ready to trade their souls for a wish. Obviously, the jinn needs a lot of souls to charge the gemstone, before he can fulfill the prophecy with the help of Morgana, the person who had unknowingly released him from the opal that night at the gallery. But he keeps her in the dark regarding her role in the prophecy. Right then, Morgana gets another disturbing vision of the jinn in his true form, and their appointment ends. But, the inmate who essentially runs all the shady businesses operating within the prison, goes up to the jinn, demanding that he gets a piece of the action. But the jinn refuses his offer of partnership, and offers him a wish in exchange for his soul instead. Butts gets impatient, and says that he wants whatever drugs that the jinn has. He explicitly states that he wants to be wasted, and stuck into the ground. The jinn takes that description as his wish, and commands Butts' two henchmen to beat him just as he said. The prison guards break up the commotion, and throw Jin into solitary confinement, for his involvement in the recent incidents happening in prison. That night in her apartment, Morgana does more research on Akira Mazda. She reads that a court sorcerer vanquished the Jin and imprisoned it using the fire opal. If the Jin is free again, he will bring about the apocalypse, by allowing the rest of his brethren to wreak havoc on the human world. To prevent this, the god, Akira Mazda, was assigned to protect the fire opal. Therefore, Morgana quickly realizes that when she had accidentally broken the Ahira Mazda statue at the gallery, she had released the jinn from the fire opal locked inside it. Morgana later tells everything to the priest, and he thinks that this is all just a grief-induced psychosis. But just to make sure, he decides to go to the prison, and see the jinn for himself. So the jinn and the priest come face to face, and the priest tells him to leave Morgana alone. He also tells him that God will vanquish him, but the jinn just laughs in his face. He copies Morgana's voice to threaten the priest, and says that he will pay a visit to her soon. Later that night, Morgana sees the jinn in his monster form inside her shower. But he quickly disappears after a few seconds. Afterward, the priest's research sheds light on Morgana's role in the prophecy. After the jinn collects 1001 souls, the person who released jinn will be granted three wishes. And after granting the third wish, all the other jinn will be free to roam the earth. The priest also reads that the jinn can only be sent back to his realm by someone pure of heart. Since Morgana is a thief and a killer, she needs to work on her purity first. In the following, Morgana undergoes a series of purification rituals that involve praying in Latin and cutting off her pinky finger in penance. She also returns the stolen paintings and goes to church for a confession. A month passes, and the jinn gets out of solitary confinement. He has already exhausted all the prisoners' souls, and he tells Vodka that if he is ready to leave the prison, they can escape together once Vodka gives him his soul in exchange. They are interrupted by a prison guard, who's been watching the Jinn closely since he arrived. He had noticed that the Jinn was involved in the increase of contraband and the recent disorder in prison. He states that he wants to be alone in a room with the Jinn for one minute, and have a knockdown dragout fight. The Jinn grants his wish, and suddenly, the prison guard finds himself inside a room, face to face with the Jinn in his monstrous form. A few moments later, the prison guard walks out, and asks Vodka in the Jinn's voice, if he wants to leave the prison. Vodka is amazed by the Jinn's abilities, and happily trades his soul for a chance of freedom. Afterward, Morgana informs the priest that the Jinn has escaped prison with a Russian inmate. The priest recalls Vodka's name, and remembers that he had killed two people in his parish, and was often seen in a Russian club before he went to prison. True enough, Vodka and the Jinn are celebrating their freedom at the club. The Russian mob boss appears, and all the other people in the club cower in fear of him. Vodka has grown tired of bowing and scraping at the boss's feet, and requests that the Jin make him the new mob boss. But things don't work that way, and the Jin is only allowed to grant one wish per soul. Furthermore, the Jin has claimed about a couple of hundred souls only, out of the 1001 he needs to power the fire opal. So Vodka thinks of a loophole. He brings the jinn to the mob boss, and tells him that the Wishmaster can grant whatever his heart desires, including the totally free vodka of luxury brands. Initially, the boss refuses, and says that there is nothing he wants that he couldn't get. But vodka reminds him that he can't get his hands on his enemy in Chechnya. The boss is intrigued by that, and tells the jinn that he wishes to have his enemy's head. The jinn interprets the wish literally, and puts the enemy's head on the body of the boss. 
The henchmen try to attack him, and Vodka replaces him as the mob boss. Morgana then storms into the club and shoots the Jin with a gun, intending to finish the curse once and for all. But the Jin is a very powerful being, and the bullets did nothing to him. He transforms into his monster form and terrorizes both Morgana and Vodka. He offers Morgana a free wish that she can use to bring her dead boyfriend back to life. She runs away in terror instead of answering. The priest finds Morgana kneeling and crying at the altar, inconsolable over the fact that she helped bring the Jin back into the world. He comforts her and says that God sees her earnestness and will forgive her sins. The two go back to the club and try to persuade Vodka to help them end the Jin. After seeing the Jin's true form, Vodka is having second thoughts about his allegiances as well. He is shaken by what he saw, and he attempts to shoot Morgana to end the Jin's chances of ruling the world. But Morgana remains unhurt. Vodka then informs them that the Jin now has only a fraction of the souls he needs. But Vodka had earlier pointed him to a place where he can claim desperate souls wholesale. It turns out that this place is a casino. The Jin is already there, marveling at how many people he can ensnare. Later that night, Morgana receives a call and hears Vodka's voice. He tells her that he has purchased a plane ticket for her to go to where the Jin is, so she can stop him before he collects all the souls. However, it's actually the Jin on the phone, not Vodka. He is laying a trap for Morgana, so she would be there as he completes the souls he needs. Morgana asks for another ticket for the priest, and he agrees. Before they leave, the priest goes through their research again. He finds the exact incantation that the court sorcerer had used to bind the jinn to the fire opal, and he believes that they can use the same incantation to send him back. Soon after, things quickly turn crazy at the casino, as all the people start hitting the jackpot in various games. This is all due to the jinn granting their wishes to get all the souls he needs. As the night goes on, the fire opal gets fully charged, and the jinn finishes claiming the souls of all 1001 people whose wishes he granted. On the way to the casino, Morgana senses the massacre that is happening and screams in horror. She and the priest soon arrive at the casino and track the jinn down in an office upstairs. She says that she wishes that the jinn is gone forever, but since he is an immortal, it does not work. The priest grabs the fire opal from the desk and tries to banish the jinn with the incantation, but this doesn't work either. The Jin takes Morgana to his realm and shows her the priest, who is now crucified on a cross. Distraught, she wishes for the Jin to release the priest, and he complies by killing him. Morgana now has only two wishes left. For her second wish, she says that she wishes that there is no evil in the world. But this does not work again, since evil is needed for good to exist. The Jin then takes them back to the casino floor, where the casino manager is freaking out about 200 of his customers dying all of a sudden. He wishes that the nightmare would come to an end and the Jin grants his wish by causing even more chaos for the remaining people in the casino. After that, the Jin pressures Morgana to make her wishes. She asks him to tell her the prophecy again. He repeats it, and she realizes that if she was pure of heart, she can finally banish the Jin back to his realm. Therefore, she wishes that she never killed the guard, making her pure of heart again. Morgana takes the stone and utters the incantations, releasing all the souls back into the world and sending the Jin back into the fire opal. The movie ends with Morgana and the priest happily reuniting, while the Wishmaster Jin howls inside his gemstone prison, wishing in despair that if only he was not that stupid to be fooled by humans. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.